Cup week here at On the Coast, and we're finishing up by going back to the fans and one woman who has opened up a specific K-pop cafe in Vancouver just for the community. And joining us now here in studio is Anushka Srivastava, owner of Butterfly Tea and Dessert. Anushka, hi, thank you for coming in. Hi, Gloria, thank you for having me here. I really appreciate it. I'd love to hear, where did this inspiration come from to open up a K-pop cafe? So I always wanted a cafe of my own, but during the pandemic, when I was alone and I was really, you know, struggling because I was like homebound, no way to get out, K-pop really like, you know, was like my best pastime of all. And it cheered me up when I was feeling the most down. And around that time was when I felt like it would be so amazing if there was a place where I could just talk about all these amazing things that I was discovering about K-pop and like K-pop artists in general. And just, you know, have like like-minded people who shared the same interests to talk about. And then there was also this trend of like, K-pop events going hand in hand with bubble tea. And so I thought, you know, what better way to kind of discuss K-pop and listen to your favorite music than over a cup of bubble tea? Well, it's kind of interesting. You're saying, come on in and, and talk. Let's chat. Let's get together. What was your, your vision for, for the project? Um, so one thing that I constantly notice with people around me, and in fact, like with myself too, there's a little bit of hesitation among K-pop fans when talking about their passion, because, you know, necessarily like your family or your parents, they might not understand. There's also like a lot of prejudices that sometimes surround K-pop that, you know, people cannot look past. And so I would always feel uncomfort uncomfortable just like going to my friends, talking about K-pop. And I was like, I wish I could find like more fellow K-pop fans to hang out with. And so now that I've created this space, it's amazing to see, like, you know, so many school students who necessarily don't have friends in school who are into K-pop now pop into the shop and they get so excited looking at all the images of the idols. They're taking pictures. They're chatting with me. We open albums together, get excited over what photo cards are pulling. It's like no one needs to feel any awkwardness celebrating their love for K-pop. And that one space for that is my shop. And I feel so great about that. Right. Well, OK, there's the bubble tea. Tea, there's the albums and posters, and you've just created this real K-pop vibe in there. But you also hold events. So what, what kinds of events? Um, we've hosted a lot of them. So, like, sometimes we celebrate, like, you know, birthdays of the idols or, like, some idols when they have, like, Idol groups actually have new releases. So very recently, this group called Stray Kids had a new album, and we were like, you know what, let's do an event, let's celebrate it in the shop. Um, and then that way, it's a way of promoting the artist too, so more people can find out about them. And then, you know, again, fans get a time to like, because a comeback is kind of a momentous occasion in like a K-pop stance, um, you know, day to day, because it's like, oh, my favorite artist is releasing new music. And, you know, then now we've given them a space to celebrate that um, and to, you know, really hype it up. Right. Well, and what kind of reaction do you get from people who come in? There's always a little bit of screaming because they look at like <laughs> all the images that we have and there's a bit of excitement where they're like, oh my God, that's my favorite artist. And, you know, we've got a picture, a poster of them. Um, and then people like immediately start chatting. Like they'll ask me about like what my favorite artist is, how they get into K-pop. Sometimes we'll exchange like social media. So long term friendships are born like it's really so much fun. And and my favorite thing is when non-K-pop fans actually walk into the cafe and they will discover a new artist and they get so excited too. Like they'll ask me all questions about them. And I was like, well, now you're a K-pop fan in the making. <laughs> Does anybody say, not my not my cup of tea? Not my cup of bubble tea? I'm out of here. <laughs> not really. I feel like most, I mean, to be honest, all these artists are like so incredibly like good looking, right? So I feel like it's very hard for people to turn away uh, from it. But of course, like if there's people who are not a K-pop fan, you can still come grab a bubble tea and, you know, you don't necessarily have to get immersed in the K-pop experience. But so far, most people who stop by the shop are just... Because there's that element of curiosity too, right? Because this is something maybe you don't know about. And like now's your chance to find out more about it. And I'm like, I'm so enthusiastic talking about this too. Um, that if, you know, if someone even shows a mild amount of interest, I'm always willing to like help and talk. Right. Have you ever had any stars drop by? I wish I did, but not so far. We're, we're a very new business, so we opened up around like nine months ago only. Um, so I'm hoping it's like more people find out about the shop that eventually one day a star will pop by. <laughs> <laughs> right. What, what kind of plans do you have moving forward? I, as you point out, it hasn't been a year yet, but where, where would you like to see this go? 
Um, I kind of want to integrate like more activities and kind of like friendship making circles in uh, the space because like so far what we've seen is that people will show up with their own friends and they're happy to spend time with them but I kind of want like you know more random strangers to bond over is why like we try to host a lot of um, events that involve like activities like actual like bracelet making or origami or things like that where you can sit down on a table make something um, and then, of course, chat about K-pop, drink some bubble tea. So in in my opinion, the vision for this space is just for more people to feel comfortable coming in without a friend, to know that, hey, I can enjoy everything that I love about K-pop, even if I don't have a friend coming along. Well, Anushka, good for you. You've managed to combine your, your career and your passion. How does that feel? It feels great. Um, to be honest, like like I said, like, you know, K-pop in a lot of ways has really like shaped up my personality and helped me as a person as well, right? So being able to like having a space where hopefully people can get a similar kind of support really feels like amazing. Um, and sometimes, you know, it's so much more about the experience. It's never just about the bubble tea at our, our shop. Um, and I and I love everything about it. Like, you know, I love coming, like, you know, going into the shop, knowing that every moment that I'm going to spend there is just going to be incredibly fun. Well, it's just been such a such a ride for us here at On the Coast to to be exploring all of the various facets of K-pop and the influence it has across Metro Vancouver. So thank you for being part of that. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. <laughs> that is Anushka Srivastava, owner of the K-pop cafe. It's called Butterfly Tea and Dessert. Uh,